Hi, I'm commercial photographer and digital artist Brian Rogers Jr. Today I just wanted to make a video on how to speed up your workflow using layers in Photoshop. Alright, so on my screen I've got a flattened document. This is a product shot that I just finished recently. And the first thing we're going to do, you're going to notice that the layer that we have is the background layer because it's the only layer we have, it's, it's a flattened document. The first thing you can do is you can actually unlock this layer by simply clicking on it. You don't have to double click, you don't have to do anything, just click on the lock icon and it'll completely get rid of the lock. The lock lets you move your layer around independent. Um, if you have it locked, there's not really a whole lot you can do to it. Um, so as you add layers, if you decide later on that you want to move this one around or um, put anything underneath this layer, you're going to need to remove that lock. Next we're going to rename our layer. So if you double click where it says layer zero, we can just call this watch. The next tip is creating layer styles. Now a lot of people that I know actually go to this effects tab down here at the bottom and you can very well do that, but you can also just double click the layer and it'll bring up the layer style panel and it's just a lot quicker. If you want to add a new layer in Photoshop, you could just go over here and click on the little new layer icon. That's one way to do it. I'm going to delete that just by pressing delete. You can also hit control shift N and that'll bring up a new layer. And what I like about this is you can actually rename the layer right on the spot. So we'll just call this, we'll just call it retouch layer. Now the next tip is to duplicate a layer. So what we're going to do, we're going to just go back to the watch and I'm going to hit control J. And you'll see that every time I do that, it makes a new copy of the layer. Now to group layers, all we need to do is make a quick selection here. I have watch copy five selected and I'm going to shift click and select whatever layers I want to include in that group. Now before I go any further, if you just wanted a group on this single layer, you could very well do that. So we'll go ahead and do that first. I'm just going to hit control G and we're just going to call this watch group test. Now when I close that group, you'll see that there's only one image included in it. So if we wanted to add more layers to that group, we could select the layer we want and we could simply shift click and then drag into that group. Now let's say I'm going to actually undo that real quick. Let's say you only want to select this layer and this layer down here. Well if you hold shift down it's going to select all of those layers. So what you can do is just click the layer you want and then hold the control key and you can choose other layers as well. So you can kind of skip and bypass layers that are in between. So now I can just drag them up and add them to that group. Okay, so I'm going to delete that layer. We don't really need that. All right, so the next thing we're going to cover are blending modes. One thing I like to do when experimenting with blending modes is instead of going to this drop down menu every single time and trying to, you know, figure out what blend mode I want to use, sometimes I just want to look at it visually and just kind of go through them all and cycle through them. So if you have a layer selected, hit the V key for the move tool, hold shift, and then hit the plus key. And what that's going to do is it's going to cycle through your blend modes. So you'll notice we went from normal to lighten, screen, and we can just go all the way through there until we find what we're looking for. If we want to back up, we can hit the minus sign. So shift minus to go back. So right now I'm going to just keep it on the screen layer. And maybe what we want to do is we want to add a layer mask. So what you can do is just go right down to this icon and click on that. Now one little trick. If you know that you want to hide this layer behind the layer mask, there's a couple of things that you can do. You can add the layer mask and hit control I to invert the mask, which will basically hide the layer that we just had. Or let me undo that real quick. So I'm going to get rid of the mask completely. If you hold the alt key while hitting the mask, it will automatically hide that mask or hide the layer behind that mask. And then what you can do is, you know, take your brush tool and start brushing in where you want those highlights. All right, so let's say we have the highlights where we want them, but maybe they're a little bit bright. Another thing you might do in the layers panel is you might adjust the opacity of the layer. Now you could easily go over here and slide down and just kind of visually take a look at it. But one thing that I like to do is make sure that my move tool is selected. I've got the layer that I want 
and all I have to do is hit a number key. So right now we're at 100%. If I hit the number nine, we'll go to 90%. So if you look at the opacity here, you'll see that we went down 10%. So as you hit other numbers, it will go accordingly. So let's hit seven, we're gonna be at 70%. Let's hit three, we're gonna be at 30%. Maybe we want kind of an odd number, so maybe we'll go 47%. If you hit four seven, it'll dial in 47%. That's a really quick tip that I love to do and it, it saves a ton of time. Another thing you may wanna do with your layers are add color to them. This is something that I do if I've got layers that need a little bit of work later on and I wanna come back with fresh eyes and make adjustments. If you right click on this little eyeball icon, you'll notice that you have different colors that you can select. So if I've got a layer that maybe needs some work, I might select yellow. So if I've got a ton of layers going on, I can easily go back to this and know that the yellow one needs work. Uh, this is just something that I do personally, but I think it'd probably help a lot of people. All right, so now we're gonna add a text layer. In order to do that, just hit the letter T. And what we're gonna do, we're just gonna go ahead and click. And let's write some quick copy. And just kind of bump that over real quick. So you see when you press the letter T, it will automatically create a text layer for you. Okay, so let's say we wanna create a clipping mask. There's a couple of ways to do that. What I'm gonna do is I am going to quickly just select this image, hit Command J to make a copy of it, and I'm gonna take this layer and just move it right above this little headline that I made. I'm gonna free transform that, bring it down just a little bit. And to create a clipping mask, there's a couple of different things you can do. While you have that layer selected, you can hit Control Alt G. And Control Alt G will clip that layer specifically to the layer that's underneath it. Another way you can do that is you can hold the Alt key and click between the layers. And you'll notice that when you hover between the layers, you get this little arrow icon. That'll do the same thing. So there's two different ways to do it. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to create a smart object from these layers. So in order to do that, all you have to do is right click and go to convert to smart object. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select the headline and layer one, and we're just gonna make this a smart object. And what that's gonna allow us to do is go to the filter menu, select a filter, add an effect, and then if we decide that we wanna change it later, all we have to do is go back and click on that layer and it'll pop right back up. So this is a great way to work non-destructively in Photoshop. All right, another thing that I find really helpful are layer styles. Now we covered this a little bit ago when we double clicked on the layer, but we're gonna go ahead and do that again. And let's just add some layer styles here. Maybe we're gonna add some color. Maybe I wanna sample this green. Maybe we want to add some glow. And maybe some inner shadow. So now we've got all of these layer styles added to our layer. But if we wanted to individually mask out some of these or make individual adjustments, it's almost impossible to do when it's connected to the layer the way it is. So one thing that you can do is you can actually go up into the layer menu, go to layer style, and create layers. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna create an individual layer from each one of those layer styles, and it adds a clipping mask to that layer so you can go back basically and make any adjustments to those individual layers, um, and it's really helpful. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So we've got all the layer styles that we added. It keeps the names of them for us, so that's really helpful. And what you can do is you can add a layer mask. And then let's say you wanted to get rid of that layer style in certain areas. And then maybe we'll just group those. So 
again, making a layer style and then having the ability to create layers, individual layers from that layer style, is something I use all the time. All right, so let's say you need to find a layer. Maybe you've got a document and you've got just a ton of layers. I know with this image, you know, I may have had 100 layers or more. Um, this was a crazy composite to build. So let's say you're looking for a text layer, for example. Instead of filtering through and, you know, expanding your groups to see where uh, your text is or anything like that, I'm going to just create a couple of new layers real quick. So in order to find layers, there's a little filter menu here. Now this is helpful if you're looking for a very specific layer and you want to find it quickly. You can filter it by kind, name, effect, mode, attribute, color, smart object, selected, and artboard. I'm going to just keep kind selected. And let's say we had a ton of layers in here and we were just looking to find the text layer so we can make an adjustment to it. If you just click this little T icon, it's only going to show you the text layers. We don't have any adjustment layers right now, so it's not showing that. But let's go ahead and add one. Actually, let's add a few. All right, so we've got quite a few adjustment layers. If I click on this little filter icon for adjustments, it will only show us the adjustment layers. So if you're looking for a specific layer and you want to find it fast, definitely check out the filter menu. Okay, so another quick way to find a layer quickly is to use the Move tool, so hit the letter V, and then you're going to hold Control or Command, and you're going to click on a layer. So, for example, maybe I want to make an adjustment to this test text layer that I created. I'm going to click on that, and you'll notice that it automatically takes me right to that layer. So maybe I want to go down to this clever headline layer. Let's click on that and you'll see that it's showing us our group. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind. When you have the Move tool selected, if you go up in the upper left-hand corner, there's a couple of options. One is Group and one is Layer. If you choose Group, it's going to choose the group that that layer is in. If you choose Layer, it'll get even more specific when you control click on it. So let's go ahead and click on this again. And you'll notice that when I clicked on it, it went specifically to this green layer. Let's go ahead and click on something else. Now that I clicked on the watch, it's actually selecting the watch layer. So that's a fast way if you've got a ton of layers and you just want to get to something quickly, use the Move tool, hold Control or Command, and just simply click. All right, let's say we've built our file, we're completely happy with the way everything looks, and we want to just merge everything. So one way to do that is to hold Shift, Control, Alt, and E. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a merged layer of all of the work that we've done and put it all in one layer. And what that allows you to do is it just gives you a final layer that you can use and drag into other documents. And then maybe you want to keep your build files underneath that so you could just group that. All right, so there you have it. Those are some tips and tricks I've learned over the years of using Photoshop. And hopefully that will help you guys speed up your workflow as well. All right, so if you guys want to learn more about product photography and Photoshop techniques, be sure to head over to fstoppers.com, check out my profile, and follow me. Also, click the link below so you can subscribe to a newsletter that will give you information about any upcoming tutorials that fstoppers and I work on together.